so uh, please, Chris, um, I'm very glad that you are with us and uh, I'm waiting for your speech. Well, uh, thank you, Maria, and uh, buenas tardes todos en España. Me llamo Chris Baldwin. <laughs> Creo que voy a hablar hoy en, en inglés, pero puedo hablar en español y entiendo bastante bien para la futura. Pero, uh, y muchísimas gracias a María José para la gestión de esta tarde. Um, hello, everybody. I do speak Spanish. I lived in Spain for 20 years, uh, but I will speak today in um, English. Uh, but I'm very happy to communicate in whichever language people feel comfortable in, uh, especially as our hosts are in Valencia and have taken this huge step in convening us together for this very important conference. I'd just like to uh, send my greetings to Keto, Adrien and Iveta and everybody in the um, auditorium today. We're here because we are human beings. And although our lives are um, mediated through technology, uh, there is something every single one of us shares, which is a heart. Uh, I live in Bulgaria, in the southeast of Europe, uh, very close to the Greek-Turkish border, uh, in a very multicultural society where outside of the city I live in, the main language is Turkish, uh, but in the city, the main language is Bulgarian. Uh, and over the last 15 years, I've been working mainly with European capitals of culture uh, as an artistic director in Wroclaw, in Poland, in Kaunas, in Lithuania, Greece, in Elefsina this year, uh, and in um, Ireland, Galway, European Capital of Culture 2020. And the thing that I think binds all of these together and what has become very clear in my own understanding of our work as cultural practitioners, and I'm very interested and delighted to hear Keto bring together the three words, ecology, culture, um, uh, 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 and democratic practice. Because at the heart of all public culture are, I think, probably those three things. But sadly, there is one other word that binds us together as Europeans and, and more widely as well. And that word is or phrase is collective trauma. Since the beginning of the development of the European Union, I think there's been two forces that have been kind of bringing us together. And sometimes we've come together kicking against coming together. And I ought to tell you that I am actually British and my country has been kicking very hard. I'm very sorry to say against the very act that the 21st century should be about, which is finding ways to celebrate our differences and to find humanistic union. Collective trauma is something that pulls together, sadly, Europe in the 20th century. Uh, I lived in Spain, as I said, for 20 years. My family is Spanish. And the trauma that create, was created through the 40 years of Franco is still a living memory and a, a living reality in the bodies of many people. And in fact, inside the curriculums of many universities, and the public services of many of the Spanish uh, organizations and, 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 and uh, structures. Some of them are reactions against that period, but some of them are also manifestations of that period. And here in Bulgaria, where I live, it's been acutely interesting over the last year since the aggressive violent attack by Russia on Ukraine this country too, in Bulgaria, is suffering from a very deep, very violent trauma that has left it completely vulnerable to understanding what is at stake now. 50% of the Bulgarian population are relatively in favor of Putin's 
aggression against Ukraine. And 50% are not. And then when you look around the Bulgarian landscape, you literally find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sculptures celebrating the arrival of Soviet soldiers in 1944 and 45 who occupied the country for three years afterwards and removed 80 percent of the gross national product from this country in the name of liberation. It's no wonder that a whole generation of people, both young and old, are very confused about what a war apparently against Ukrainian fascism really is. So we are in a very complex moment as Europeans. If you go to Poland, where I spent five years working recently as director of the European Capital of Culture, you find a completely different set of collective traumas that very much impact upon the way people see their futures. And the past really is only important in so far that it can impact on the decisions we make about tomorrow. And this is where, as Cato quite rightly said, culture and art and education play a fundamental role in helping our citizens and young people in particular prepare themselves for a very complicated present and future. We have to develop our intercultural skills, our ability to talk over and through our differences, our misunderstandings, to find the humanity in one another Otherwise, the past will terrorize the future as it's presently happening in the Ukraine. So I'm really very much looking forward to working with you all, with young artists and older artists alike, with cultural practitioners and theorists to look at what we can do as this cultural community. What can we do in our practice to create the safe frames that we need in order to reach out to those who we think are our enemies and those who we think uh, are, are the beasts, are the other, are the animals. Because it's only through that extremely difficult work will we be able to have some hope for the future. Europe is defined not by its common history, but its multiple myths. And myths have to be confronted. Psychic myths, historical myths, and we can do that through our art practice and our cultural practice to hopefully lead us to some idea of personal community uh, and national freedoms. I'll stop there for now. Thank you very much. Thank you.